David Lovejoy with KGNC News Radio. It's that time of the year again. It's election season. I'm joined by a man who's running for Potter County Commissioner, Place 3, Mr. John Coffey. Welcome, sir. Thank you. Glad to be here. Now, <clears throat> you've entered this race. Uh, this, the current holder of the seat is going to retire after two terms. He's stepping away from the office. And you're running in the uh, March primary against two other Republicans. The four? It's four now? Wow. The four was running. The last sheet I saw was three. Uh, now, you've been associated with Potter County for a long time. Yes, sir. You served on the Potter County Sheriff's Office 35 years, right? More than 35 years, yes, sir. What do you bring to this job that the others can't bring to it? Well, I think I'm, I haven't been a Potter County employee for over 35 years. I've seen a lot of things in my career. I uh, started out as a kid back in 1985, worked my way up through the divisions, worked just nearly every aspect of the sheriff's office. I um, have promoted up to captain, so I've been a division captain for the, for the enforcement division for several years now. Previous to that, I was a division captain for the corrections division and supervised the 599 bed jail. So I have a lot of experience with budgeting, a lot of experience with, with working with uh, employees and, and staff and, and the courts and the uh, County employees and, and the, uh, the commissioner's court. I just feel like I'm the best suited for that position. I have the most to offer. And one good thing about it is if you're elected, you can hit the ground running. There's not a learning curve except just doing the position, but you know how the Potter County procedures and, and things go in that county. Right. The budgeting process will not be new to me. It's, it's uh, something I work with all the time. There's a, the sheriff's office has an overall $20 million budget. My part of that as an enforcement captain is around $10 million. I'm very familiar with that. I'm familiar with operations. I'm familiar, familiar with the procurement process. Um, I, I appear and speak in commissioner's court frequently. And so I, I can, as you said, I can hit the ground running and know what I'm talking about. Now, tell the folks a little bit about you. Uh, were you born and raised, family, that sort of thing? Okay. So I uh, was born and raised, in, or actually I was born in Las Cruces, New Mexico. Moved over here my seventh grade year with my folks. Went to Bonham, uh, graduated from Amarillo High. Uh, shortly thereafter, I, I uh, got on with the sheriff's office as, as a reserve. In 1984, went through an academy. And then uh, in, in 85, uh, Sheriff Boydston hired me. And so I started my career uh, January 1st of 1985. Wow, wow, that's impressive. I'm married and I have, a, I have two sons, uh, a daughter-in-law and a, and a stepson. Great, great. That's a, a long history of being local, of being here, yes, sir. present. Um, as you look at this race, as you look at this spot, what are some of the things that you see that need to be addressed in the county? What are some glaring things that you say, I'm going to focus on that? Well, I think that, for one thing, I've, I've Talked about Bushland and some of my political stuff that I've put out. I, I think the folks in Book, Bushland uh, would benefit from some type of a of a grocery store or some type of a of a store that they could they could shop at and not have to travel to Amarillo. So, I would like to see uh, maybe a neighborhood Walmart or something come into that community and, and maybe help those folks not have to travel so far to get the what they need. Um, I'd like to see the um, the uh, flats updated and stuff for the. For the new developments, uh, there's some there's some stuff that we need to look at in that area as well. Uh, we have limited as a, as a county commissioner, we have limited control over that. But I think it's important that we take a look at, at, at those rules at this point and see if there's something that we could tweak and, and adjust. Um, I've, I've talked to some folks out in, in River Road area, and, and their issues are, uh, of course, they think their uh, their school taxes are high. I think probably everybody believes that. Yeah. And I don't disagree with that. They've also mentioned that, that maybe if they could, if there could be some kind of cleanup um, process developed, and so I think for those people, if we could maybe come up with an idea to, to maybe get with our road and bridge department and maybe have a have a, a truck or, or some kind of a trailer um, deposited in, in some some uh, neutral location, um, and maybe some of those folks that, that live in the less desirable areas of, of that area. Um, Maybe they'll come up and clean up those areas or whatever. And I think just to overall, just to take an interest in your community and try to try to make things better and, and try to take a little pride in what you have and and um, help help with the property values. 
and uh, and maybe and maybe business would would want to focus in that area. I think I think if we could get some more businesses, that was going to help with the overall tax rate moving forward. I think it will help with with taxes moving forward if we could spread some of that tax across to to larger businesses. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you have one of the biggest precincts uh, on the court. You would have one. Um, and it, it varies from economic uh, to everything. It's, it's d different parts of your precinct are focused on different things. Uh, a lot of work, a big, big community to work on. Uh, if you're elected tomorrow, let's say hypothetically the election is tomorrow, and the people choose John Coffey, what is going to be your path? You're going to check. I know you just said you're going to check on the economics of it, but what are you going to bring to that commissioner's court to know that these people know you're representing them? Okay. Well, the some of the issues, another issue that I didn't that I didn't bring up, but I will bring up now is is the construction of the courthouse. I think that's imperative that we that we do that right. We we've built a law enforcement center east of town, and uh, that's where our sheriff's office is. I think we spent around 19 million on that. The the new courthouse. Construction is going to be around $54 million. The overall debt to the county is about $117 million. I want to make sure that, we, that we're careful with the money. Uh, I'm very, very conservative. I want to make sure that the, the dollars are spent and, and need to be spent. Um, and I think, I think we've done that as, as, a, as a court. I'm very proud of the Potter County and, and, the, and the elected officials, the department heads. But I'd like to, I'd like to have a say so in some of that as well. I also want to share with you that, that we have some very good employees, and I think that that for the sheriff's office, the competition for the sheriff's office is, is Pantex and the police department, and we're losing some folks, and and I think the employees need a voice, and I've been very supportive in my current role, and I continue to, I want to continue to be supportive to the employees also. So moving forward, I I just think that I I I have so much to offer because I've been there so long and, and have the a great perspective, a great understanding of, of where the court is and, and where the county is and where the citizens are. Um, obviously, I'm a taxpayer too, so I want to I want to watch that money. I want to be careful with, with our spending. I want to I want to just know that it's a necessary expenditure. Yeah, yeah. Mr. John Coffey, he's running for the Potter County Commissioner's Court, place three. Wants to be a servant for the people. He's did it most of his professional career. You've been a servant of the people as a sheriff's uh, deputy, now a captain, and now he wants to put it into action on the county commissioner's board. Mr. Coffey, thank you so much for your time today, and good luck moving forward. Thank you. Thank you for allowing me to speak.